and welcome back to another get to know your mod author and this uh well this week i'm i'm technically recording this right after fading signals coming to be gone next week but or will the week fuck i fucked that totally anyway this is some guy 2000 i didn't get your real name do you care to give it uh just james i'm gonna stick with james. my first name i'm a little that's, well, that's fine i don't want your full, full, full name can i have your social security number i i have a um i'm a nigerian prince <laughs> I'm pretty old, man. It, it would be pretty low as far as numbers go. <laughs> this is James, everybody. Some guy, two thousand. Um, say hi. Hello. Well, that was that was boring. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I didn't have anything. Just ready. I, I'm not like a couch tiger here. I, 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 I'm I, yeah. I, I don't have anything. I, I'm gonna have to convene with the voices in my head and come so, up with a more spirited response. But so some personal information about James. He lives at no I'm just, uh, the. <laughs> Um, yeah, he, he's, I, I haven't, once again, I haven't really played any of his stuff, but it seems like we're on the same page. He's done a bunch of quest mods for Fallout that have gotten a lot of good reception. Um, I'm assuming he's planning some quest mods from Fallout 4 from what I've seen of that one teaser picture. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's just a plan, and again, like Mike Tyson has, <laughs> like Mike Tyson said, everybody's <laughs> got a plan until they get hit. So, uh, until the CK comes out, it's just conjecture, but, uh, I, I, you know, I did some outlines, and I'd like to do kind of a overarching uh, overarching story uh, with certain characters that appear in multiple mods and that's kind of the general goal uh, so I do point. I do have to ask if you watch the other two interview videos uh, just the first one with uh, Eleonora and just bits of it I haven't okay, watched very well, much of it, really it was an interesting the, start you haven't really watched the second one so you, you really didn't know this was coming but um, so I've heard you're doing a storyline with Hitler in Fallout 4 and you're gonna portray him in a good light how is that gonna go well I'm gonna make him a cent he's been reprogrammed and actually he's gonna be He's going to be a, a gay fashion designer, and he's actually going to be a much more female person. It, let's imagine that maybe the young Austrian's art career had taken off, and he had been appreciated as an artist, and had gotten in touch. You're going to make me have to mute the, my mic, because I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> he'd gotten in touch with a more, uh, you know, in a less patriarchal and uh, oppressive outlook. I would play that much. And so, and so, yeah, it's actually... Um, it's the good Hitler is what we're going to say. And he'll actually enrich the wasteland with his I'm, kind of impressionist I'm, I'm art. I'm going to stop and... you right here. I'm going to stop you right now because you're going to fuck yourself, by the way. I'm going to – everybody in the comments below, if you want to see him make this mod, this is the one time where I will say send a message to the mod author and annoy him on the Nexus forums because he's deserving this because oh. now I want to play this mod. Dude, I, I've got – I'm going to get – I've get so many messages about these kind of fucking things. <laughs> I'll just – I'll come up with random bullshit and be like, oh, you got to make that. I'm like, you did no, no, no. I'm not really going to make that shit. <laughs> There's no fucking way. No, no. So I forgot <laughs> Although, to... I, I'm, though, I'm sure the fa I'm sure the clothes would be good. I mean it would make for some good clothing I... mods. Say what you want about the Nazis. They had a good sense of fashion. I mean – uh, have, uh, uh, have you seen the Nazi mods that they have out? They've got Nazi uniform mods oh, on the Nazis. God, Texas. no. I've seen – like, I, and I've seen – even for Fallout New Vegas, we had that where it would be one side like Caesar's Legion where they, were, they would do – one side they were reimagined as – it was like the Eastern Front set in <laughs> post-apocalyptic uh, Mojave <coughs> wasteland. And yeah, it's the, the Nazis versus the communists and, and the, yeah, it would be this big battle where I'm just I, – I can't – I mean, I appreciate, man. I'm very open-minded about mods. I'm like, I just can't wrap my head around that one, you know, with the, <laughs> the setting. But to each their own, you know. I'm very, I'm very, uh, again, laissez-faire about mod selection, as they say. Really, you're gonna use laissez-faire? You know, people are gonna be googling that now, right? Oh well, I mean, let it, let it all fly, man. Who cares? You know, I have, I have. Well, they no... should be googling it. They get some culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's yeah. That's what I'm adding. Culture, yes. The 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 fashion, yeah. The fashion designing Hitler. That's culture. Although, hey. in an, from an artistic standpoint, uh, perhaps you know we'll inject some. Uh, you never know. Yeah, post romantic. Yeah, rom impressionist impressionism. Yeah, that'll be great. Actually, that'll I think I think you'd get a lot of hits if you had Hitler and Preston get together. Oh Jesus, that's. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mind is going places, and like I'm just gonna <laughs> fucking. All right, all right. People. Let's. Uh... Let's, uh, oh let's, God! Let's, let's just be... jump here. You can no, offend I mean, everybody. Be, Have you watched? They would shit? be a couple. They would be a couple. Is what it would be, and uh, and that's exactly where I would go. And it would start. And it would be kind of an arc, you know, kind of a uh, uh, Breaking Bad thing. They would start on a good end, but you know, the quest for artistic purity would lead to an artistic cleansing of the wasteland, oh as uh, Preston and Hitler. Got <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's exactly what would happen. That's a good uh, one settlement at a time. They would. They, yes. 
uh, they would up, up the artistic standards uh, of the wasteland. That's exactly what would happen. I still play that mod. So I, I, I got called on this one. I forgot to ask Fading Signal, and I pretty much, after talking to you before, I pretty much know where you're going to go with this one, but what are your thoughts on the slutty mods and the objectification of women mods and shit that, you know, is generally on the front page of the Nexus? Honestly, personally, I mean, I don't use those mods, but I really, uh, again, I don't care. I mean, if people want to use, and part of that comes from making, let's be honest, quest mods are, a lot of people don't even use them, and you get, and they're subjective, and a lot of people will give very, uh, shall we say, spirited feedback uh, yeah. in regards to quest mods. And again, because they're, they're very complex, and they alter the actual narrative of the game, and so you're going to get very... Uh, strong reactions from players and about lore, about storytelling, characterization, things that they care a lot about. And as a result, some people are naturally very picky or they you can get outright hostility. And because of that, I guess over a few years, I developed a point of just absolutely live and let live. Uh, if you want fucking magical starfish ponies that, sh that shit out rainbow kisses and flowers from heaven and you know shoot fucking laser beams out of their eyes and tentacle rape Hitler on in the fucking settlement... <laughs> Preston Garvey, then you can fucking have it, all right? I'm not going to judge you. That's your fucking thing. I, I filter that shit out. And honestly, that's probably why I just don't even notice it. I filtered out so much stuff uh, with the settings on the Nexus that, I, again, I just don't notice it. Uh, to each their own, man. That's how I feel. No, oh, fair enough answer. Um, and, and something you just, you, what you did just bring up, which is, uh, it's very true. The uh, the quest mods and the people that's being, like, what what was your drive to actually start doing quest mods as opposed to anything else? Because my background's in uh, liberal arts and history. I mean, and I didn't know dick about programming. And, and from the technical, I, I just wasn't drawn to any of the technical uh, side of it. I just wanted to tell stories set in the Older Scrolls and Fallout. Because, uh, you know, I, I had played the original Fallouts years ago, but I didn't really get into uh, Bethesda's games until Oblivion and Fallout 3, <clears throat> excuse me, right about the same time, uh, 2009, 2010. And I was, when I discovered that the quest mods, uh, when I found the quest mods that were out there and what you could do, uh, and just the, the sheer variety relative even to the vanilla game, you've got these very different storytelling. Like take somebody like Poose Moose for Fallout. He makes these very detailed, intricate puzzle puzzle quests that have no dialogue, but they're all – all this, the narrative is advanced in puzzles and prose. And then you, on the other side, you'll get obviously the quests like mine that are just extremely profane and ultra-violent and everything. But <laughs> you get a huge range of uh, of creative styles that's that you don't even get in the vanilla game uh, selection sometimes. And when I found that, I said, all right, well, I at least want to try because I just – when you play through these games and they're so open-ended, I said, all right, well, what if you did this or this, added a story here? And they're, they're missing things like bounty hunting or boxing and stuff like that that I've made. And I said, well, like for Fallout New Vegas, you know, because I played Fallout 2 a lot, it's like, well, shit, they got to have boxing. And that was something I wanted to do, but I just didn't have the skill. And so I tried to start with Oblivion uh, partly because the setting was so open-ended and I knew um, – uh, I was frankly just a little more comfortable with it as opposed to Fallout initially, even though now I'm, the irony is I'm, I'm much more known for my Fallout mods. <laughs> um, I uh, just tried to make something simple at first. The first mod I made was actually kind of a battle mod, but it was so terrible and such a clusterfuck. I just took it down. I said, all right, let me start over, do something simple. And so I made a dueling mod uh, where you just – it's kind of an NPC mod where you find uh, different kind of scripted encounters based on your decisions in the game or sometimes just random events where you have people that challenge you to fight uh, at, at different places. You know, like say you're head of the Fighters Guild or whatever, they're going to try to break your balls about it. Or you just walk in on this guy having an argument with his wife, and, and she tries to, you know, hit on you, and he's like, get away from my wife, you son of a bitch, and he's drunk, you know, and you got to go fight that asshole outside. And other stuff like that. And uh, it seems stupid, but it was just a way for me to be to script very simple events and to try to t take steps towards storytelling, uh, doing, doing the things that I'd like to do. And I was just trying to make functional mods back in 2010. And when Fallout New Vegas came out, I was like, all right, this game needs some bounty hunting uh, because they had a quest line called Three Card Bounty, which everybody liked, but it was still a little truncated. It was a great vanilla quest line, and it was very popular. I liked it. And I said, all right, what if we add on to that? It's already kind of a Western-themed game, and that's a genre I'm pretty comfortable with. So I tried to just take some of the zany shit from uh, Fallout 2, which is very pop culture. Uh, wild wasteland heavy 
And I said, that's kind of the style I'm going to go with. Not, don't take itself too seriously. And it's just real simple FedEx kill quests with a, with a lot of fun dialogue. And uh, I voiced the main character. And I voiced too many characters. I've, I've patched that <laughs> shit out since because I've learned, I've learned what I can and can't do as a voice actor. That's a good lesson to learn. But uh, There's only uh, so luckily, much you can do before people start to catch you I, on. Yes, absolutely, and uh, and and no, and again, it's a pain in the ass with that actors going AWOL, but you got to be disciplined oh, about it. It's yeah. hard, hard lesson for me. But uh, yeah, Stephen uh, was people liked the character and the dialogue, and so I got a lot of great feedback on that. And I said, well, shit, I, you know, I had kind of done a lot of foreshadowing, and a lot of it was just me. I was making it up as I went along. There was not really any cogent design because again, I didn't even know if the fucking thing would work. I just wanted to tell a bullshit story and kind of set up the – if people like it, then I might be able to make something else. And it got a huge amount of response. And so I said, oh, shit, I've got to follow this up with something good and proper. And so I – like I try to do with each mod is try to kind of get out of my comfort zone and add – learn new techniques. And with the uh, second one, I tried to invest myself more in, in providing more actual role-playing options for the player because I didn't really do that in New Vegas Bounties 1. And again, my background is largely in – up until I played those Bethesda titles. I mean I played a few big RPGs. But most of my background was in, uh, say, strategy games and things like that. And See, I, I didn't have a very – oh, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say I want to I want to, I want to kind of little segue a little bit on that one because I just want to point – there's something out for the viewers just to, it, to think about the modding process is that you're not really doing this for the consumer base. You're, you're modding because you want to and it's a drive that you have. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> And it and and it's a but it's but the enthusiasm from the community like it oh, gave me so yeah. much confidence yeah it like I didn't have that much confidence in my uh, in my writing or characters or anything I said all right you know I'd studied history I didn't study English and uh, I said all right let me just give it a shot and when people were like hey I like this keep doing it and it gave me such a sense of uh, pride and I and, said well all right I feel good I'm about hoping, this I was say, that's where I'm hoping that that Fallout for like like I was mentioning before the video to him that he's gotten a lot of downloads on those mods and. It's something I literally just checked while you were talking, because I was curious, and the um, because the the amount uh, the, the amount of work you probably put into that quest mod was probably insane. Even being as simple as it was, learning things takes a while, and um, it, it's kind of surprising what comes out and what, like you said, the lore Nazis and the people will be harsher on quests. Um, I don't know if we said that in this interview or we were talking before. Very, I'm yeah, it's very well. It's very true. Yeah, absolutely true. And and but I mean like. <sighs> Like we like we we with a team did more like Balls Inferno. It was ten people worked for an entire month. There was thousands of hours put into the mod. It has you know eight nine hours of gameplay. It has less downloads than a mod I did for Fallout Four that took me less than a minute and a half to do. Stackable Concrete Foundations has more mod <laughs> downloads than something that took ten people, a conglomeration of mod authors, a month like nonstop working to do. And it's it boils down to that thing is like we you know we really didn't do it for them we did it to learn more and learn from each other and and because we had a drive to do something, and yeah. it's it, it's like you said it's great when the community get you know it's it's great when people like uh, that'll segue another question what's the worst fucking comment you've ever had? I, I mean I've had people threaten me I've had actors I've actually had Seriously? a crazy actor threaten me yeah I had a crazy actor he was a scorned. Uh, a scorned Irishman. Uh, yeah, he threatened me. I told him to go fuck himself, more or less. And uh, wait, wait, so it was a voice, a voice actor. Yeah, I cut him off because he was a fucking nut job. And I said, "Look, <laughs> you're you're too high maintenance for me." And he threw a fucking hit fit all over email. And, oh, speaking uh, of, because you you probably had that issue too. Now that you're saying it, what voice actors do you have an issue with them? Because I sure as fuck do. I know <laughs> it's a it's a it's a mixed bag. You get and here's the irony is like I found that the best voice actors. Like in terms of their their actual acting ability, tend to be the most professional. Where I have pro and they're fantastic, and you're I, right, I can you're name hundred percent. I've got a bunch. Of I mean, on the list. That, and and you know those, all right. And and it, you you become like a director with a certain cast. Like you see directors with certain actors, and every, because you get familiar and comfortable with these people, and they are familiar with your comfortable with your writing and your mods. And there's a mutual trust there. Where you run into problems is like when you're trying to cast small roles and you get unfamiliar people. I'm like, oh, I'm great. And I'm like, okay, send me a sample. No, I really, it's great. No, send me a sample. And they send you a sample. It's like, okay, this is work. And then you don't fucking hear from them ever again. And uh, then you got to recast the bullshit or you try to fucking do it yourself. And it's and people are like, this fucking sucks. You're a disaster. And before, everybody, and, uh, before everybody gets on our asses about this one, 
we know it's free. We know people are offering their services for free for something. It just gets really, really, really frustrating for a mod author when, like he said, you have to go and recast the role. You're sending them emails for a week trying to figure out where they just disappeared to. And and it, it overshadows the great ones, unfortunately, who are, like, you know, your backbone. And then all yeah. the other fucking bones just go flying off in other directions. Yeah. I've been fortunate. I mean, I can say that I've had guys like Gray Cody, Jace 180, uh, fucking uh, Unshaven. When I'm talking fucking rock solid, talented voice actors that I can call on. Uh, Yellow Dart is another one. These are guys. I mean, and, and Fallout's a smaller community. These are guys that came out of Fallout, uh, the Fallout New Vegas community in the forums, and I was able to find them. And they have voiced all kind of characters, and they've done great. Like Gray Coyote voicing Marco, my big antagonist. He was uh, just phenomenal, and that was a huge script. I mean, probably. Uh, 800, you know, 500, 800, 600 lines that he did just for that character, and he positively uh, nailed it. And he made the mod in some ways with his with his delivery. And so, it's a mixed bag. That that's why I, it's it's frustrating. And again, it's the small roles and the small stuff that kills you in the end. I found it's not the big roles as much as I would have thought that when I started modding. Right. Um, and, and and one of yeah. my issues with it too is like what you just said. He made the like. That that's that's uh, when when I cast, I'm excruciatingly strict in how I cast because um, what what you just said, we'll put in ninety nine percent of the work on the mod, and it's not to just detract from the voice actors, but that one percent to four percent they do or whatever actually makes it. It's having the the voice of your character is it's huge. It's yes. It really adds, you know, the, 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 I mean, it, it's the difference between having Bobcat Goldthwait voice somebody and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd actually kind of like that. But, yeah, but the, I, I mean, and that's, and to be honest, I've, it's made me have to become a better voice actor. And it's, and it made me break out of my show. Like, at first, I was really, part of the problem with New Vegas Bounties 1 was I was really hesitant uh, with some of And I know that seems counterintuitive in some respects, but I was really uh, there wasn't much confidence, and but I went like when I made a goofy uh, hitman mod, New Vegas Killer. Later, I just went balls out because I didn't care, and the people ended up liking it. Uh, and so, with certain, it made me a lot more comfortable. But I learned like to voice ghouls, to voice mutants, uh, things like that. And I've gotten pretty good. I'm not great, but I'm pretty good. It's workable. And like a mod like uh, the Better Angels, I did all that shit myself. Uh, but that was after years of developing talent, also knowing how to kind of how to improve my range and make characters sound distinct but that's a technique that I learned out of necessity because you know shit happens with voice actors and sometimes unless you want to wait for another month or two or three you have to voice the mod yourself uh, or voice certain characters yourself it's just the way it goes um I'm gonna pause one second I'm gonna stop the recording for a second okay so we had a problem Preston Garvey interrupted us and um was asking us to go save a settlement so uh Hitler raped him um so we're segueing into it. I started, and, and then we had to edit it out. Uh, uh, James, what's your thoughts on paid modding? Just hit it from the get-go, all all inclusive. Just go for it. In general, I support the uh, the basic idea of paid modding. I think it's uh, you need to have some certain caveats with that. Uh, for one, absolutely not. <laughs> if we're looking for how not to do it, Valve and Bethesda's initial <laughs> attempt. It's a pretty good template. I mean, it was uh, very poorly planned. They didn't take into account all the uh, legal uh Entanglements that could uh, ensue uh, when you tried to have our, you know, different uh, modders taking assets from other modders and charging for those. Uh, and there needs to be oh, yeah. a, none a of better us have betting. ever brought up the theft thing. I didn't bring that up in the last two videos. We didn't really hit yeah. on the theft. It's it's a I mean, and, and they just need to deal with it um, uh, like any other business does. There need to be some, and part of that I think could be accomplished by vetting the mods in a better way, not just letting people put them out there. Initially. There needs to be some type of screening process, uh, obviously a, a pretty liberal refund policy for users because yeah, mods. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say because uh, yeah, because well, you're gonna you're gonna segue into they can break the game, but I was gonna say the I've made jokes about it to people. And they're not really jokes. They're more like realizations that I was like, well, the yeah. first, well, the moment they do paid modding, I was like, somebody's going to make thousands and thousands of dollars when they upload a compilation of my mods before I catch it. Yeah, and that's and that's where you need uh, you need to have some type of process where people can't just get, assume an identity and upload shit. They need to have a vetting process, some type of, or perhaps a mod has to become established first before it can uh, have a paywall, something along those lines. Uh, uh, and again, I'm just I'm speculating, but I think there needs to be a better process of uh, of vetting mods before they're put out there. 
And I think Bethesda, I, honestly, I do think they're, they're going to try again at some point. It may not be Fallout 4, but the, there's just there's too much volume and too much potential uh, cash there. I mean, it, it's just it's a huge uh, potential cash cow for them. Oh, it's, un, and, it's an untapped giant, like especially if yeah. you're it into consoles. Oh, yeah, and I think that's, oh, it's going to be huge, absolutely huge, um, and a big big paradigm change in some ways, uh, exposing a whole new market to this thing that PC gamers have enjoyed for decades, and um, I think that it will be a net, po- there are going to be a lot of problems, and again, legal issues that can arise, but I think for somebody like me, and especially for content creators, it's uh, it would change, like for me, it would change my life, I mean, it really would, and it would be, it would allow me to do something that I love, and then, I, look, I'm going to make mods no matter what. You know, I can, and, and the question is, is how how much will I, how many will I make, and with how much quality will they be, or how much quality will they have? Like, well, and, I'll be and, able to pay. And people don't even oh, understand. Like, I was, you you've got say nine hundred thousand downloads. Let's just let's, let's round it up to a million. Let's say about for, from your quest mod, you've got a million downloads. And yeah. if you were to make ten cents off of each of those downloads, and then go with the realization that half those people would then not pay for it, if you had half a million downloads at ten cents a pop. You'd have been a very happy camper for those half yeah. a million downloads. Yeah, and I and that's the thing is if they and I don't even want to. I'm realistic. I know it's not DLC, and I wouldn't charge anywhere near DLC rates enough to let me make a living to do it full time. And then I would just I would commit myself to it like a novelist or something. Well, and, and be, the quality increases then. Like they, yes. like I was I was talking to people saying that um, I, I was not even making a joke about it. Somebody listening at this point is gonna be like, he's gonna do that. Yeah, if if I compile all my mods, my crafting mods, I'd put them up for a buck. Whatever the minimum would be. If I could put them for 50 yeah. cents, I'd do it. Yeah. And 3 million people downloading something at 50 cents where I'm getting a quarter out of that. So I'm getting 50%, and that's if Bethesda's nice, apparently. But if I got a quarter out of 3 million people downloading it, I could literally fund my own DLC, like bigger than a DLC, part a mod for Skyrim. And I'd throw all the money back into it. And yes. it's just, it, like I said, it'll allow content creators like you to actually, you know, you could hire voice actors. We wouldn't yeah, be dealing artists, with that. Yeah, artists, voice actors, all that shit. Uh, 3D it, it designers. Would, yeah, and you can still give it, and it'll still have a unique flair and design that will reflect that author, that that author's taste and style. It'll be like choosing a, a novelist or something like a, a uh, I guess, a, e, you know, e-publishing or something like that. And it, to me, that's that's kind of what I would compare it to. And, and I'll say this also. Again, my goal would be to make a living, and if and I know some of my mods, I would never release for money. Uh, and 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 in, and in a way, I would probably still try to adopt the CD Projekt Red method, where occasionally, you know, or even a, a good portion of my mods, I would still release for free, and they wouldn't be uh, dependent like smaller mods, like my boxing mod or bad motherfuckers stuff like that. That's just really small or goofy. Uh, you know, I wouldn't hesitate. So, uh, so you I, wouldn't be like some of the people in the Steam sale and release, you know, boxing for seven ninety nine. Oh God, no. no! I mean, absolutely. Because I mean, it took me two weeks to make, but like the big quest mods, yeah. And I think that's what people would be willing to pay for, uh, is is large scale quest mods, especially with that are interconnected and have uh, just stories that that they want to, you know, extra stories in their in the experience. And I think that's especially true in Fallout Four. People are dying for that. There's such a lack of side quests in Fallout Four. I mean, God, I've got people messaging me every day saying, "When are you going to make more content?" They don't want necessarily mine. I mean, some do, but they're just they're dying for for quest content in general for uh, Fallout Four, and I think there'll be a big demand for that. And if uh, Bethesda rolls out paid modding uh, with Bethesda.net, and again, they're so fucking quiet. I don't know what the it's like the CIA. I don't know what the fuck Bethesda's doing, but uh, if they do roll it out, I I for one will be happy if as long as it's got some uh, as long as it's user friendly in terms of the refund policy, and it's gives the modders a fair cut. And I understand, and look, I'm, I'm realistic about it. It's Bethesda's intellectual property. They're probably going to pull a majority of the cut. But, uh, and it is their right to an extent. But I think that um, I would definitely be on the pro uh, paid mods bandwagon. Now, to, see, I, 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 gotta, I, I gotta take two contentions. Uh, the CIA is much more open than Bethesda. <laughs> yeah. And, yes. and I think Bethesda is a bunch of cunts, generally speaking, in terms of how much cut they wanted for doing literally nothing before was 45%. If, if Bethesda came out the gate and they just made a symbolic gesture and did 51% to the mod authors and 49% to them, 
Like, that would actually... I, I'd still know it was symbolic and it was just a gesture. Like, they actually didn't give a shit because I don't believe they do, personally. The uh, I, I know that their company, their job is to make money. I really don't hold that against them. I just think it's... I just hate stuff that when they're like, we want to do this for the community. No, you only want to pay money and bonding to line your own pockets because they won't allow us to make money outside of them getting a sizable cut. But... Great. Yeah, I can. I can do. Yeah, especially like Patreon and things like that. They don't, and that's then that is a reflection of the fact that they don't want you making money off of it without their cut. That's, yeah, and like I say, if they did a fifty-one forty-nine in favor of the mod authors, I think as a symbolic gesture, that would be huge. And I would love it. I would. I would do a fucking handstand. Believe me. I, I yeah. I, I don't think they will. <laughs> I don't we'll think see. they will either. But I, to be honest with you, even if it was thirty or forty percent, I would. Uh, that's more than I'm making now. I mean, that's true. that's partly. And I know that's kind of a shitty thing to you know. That's kind of the, you know, it's slave, like one slave labor it, mentality. Yeah, in the in the gilded age, you know, the guys like working for you know, and I'm working twenty hours a day for ten cents a year, and and you know, the railroad barons like he's lucky to have that. I'm going to give you a one cent <laughs> wage. It's like thanks. Thanks, Mr. You know, whatever the uh, Mr. Whatever the fuck, uh, Robert Baron, and yeah, and we're supposed to be thankful. I get that, but at the same time, I'm I, I'm realistic. I know that this is uh, kind of it's terra incognita in terms of uh, it's true. You know, selling games, and we're we're in bold new territory here. And I'm I'm willing to be flexible. I mean, and to be honest, the, I, again, the part of me in my brain is saying that's I could still make a living from that. Oh, yeah. I know. And, I'm pretty confident I could. And you know, and you know, I, I, I might forgive it as well if they just release the tools. We were having a discussion on Reddit yeah. earlier today about that with some people, and they're like, just release the tools, like not just the CK. Release your NIF plugins. Release like, just give us all the tools you had to make it if you want to profit off it. That's all we ask. We're pretty well, simple. I bet you what they're doing is they're building a tutorial site and uh, kind of a, a rudimentary wiki and Bethesda.net. That's the big unanswered question. Nobody knows dick other than it's going to be a platform for consoles. We don't know if it's going to be paid, unpaid, if there's going to be ad revenue, whatever the fuck. And so it's a big question mark for me. Uh, I don't, and we're just, again, you can try to ask Pete Hines, see how far <laughs> that gets you. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I think I can get more response, like intellectually speaking, from my cat asking him about yeah. What's yeah, gonna I, happen? Oh, my cat definitely could. I mean, she's communing with with fucking spirits across the world right now. So yeah, she <laughs> so telepathic, telepathically. Yeah, she's she's already. She's, fucking. she's probably communing with my cat, who's just rolling around on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have no idea because I've had to cut this audio twice. How long we've been going on? It's been at least twenty five minutes. So I'll just any anything you want to say to people, like you know, give them any clue onto what you're planning for Fallout Four to just tease the crap out of people, or just anything you want to say at the end, just go for it. Okay, Fallout 4, uh, I'll start with that. I'm making Murder, Inc. That's the first one I've outlined, and that's kind of a film noir uh, murder mystery slash hitman series that uh, involves a, it, it, the main character, the quest giver, is a character that they know, and I'll leave it at that. He's, Nick uh, Valentine. Uh, well, not quite. It's, really? uh, well, okay. uh, oh, no, from the mod, from my mods. It's oh, a okay. Know. He's a very loquacious, uh, classy gentleman. We'll leave it at that. So but, you're going to pull a fall. Oh, oh, because it's only a 10 year difference. So you're just going to yeah. merge it at night. Oh, yes. Nice. I might have and to play your mod now. Uh, <laughs> well, if yeah, it depends on which, uh, feel free, man, but they're just brace yourself for a variety. They're, they're, there's a range of, of quality in there, but, uh, and style, but, uh, uh, the Murder Inc. will be uh, largely kind of an organized crime gritty. I'm not going to touch any of the, the sense stuff will be peripheral. It's not really something I, I want to stay away from the vanilla uh, content and themes because I, I mean that's Bethesda's territory. I try to I want to try to cut out a little uh, small niche area in the game world because I I really like the Good Neighbor and I like the tone and uh, let's say the bar and the sound there. But I want to expand on that and take it a step further. I mean there are things like that they kind of that they don't touch on like slavery and prostitution, drug abuse, chem abuse. I mean, maybe they touch on it a little bit, but it's a, it's a little, um, it, it's a little more, um, uh, rosy colored than, uh, fallouts in the past, I think. And, uh, I'd I, like I to agree with you. You're right. I, I'd, I'd like to reconnect with some of that, uh, the nasty underside of humanity, which would certainly be present in a setting like that. And some really gray morality and factions, and that's it. I mean, and there, and the thing about this mod is it's still relatively small. It'll have hopefully choices with consequences, but it's nothing too big because I know it's going to be a new toolkit. So I'm trying to be conservative in planning it, and the voice acting needs will be very minimal. And in terms of the voice acting, uh, the voice protagonist, I'm hoping to sidestep it for that first mod by using a lot of holotapes and notes uh, because I just don't know. How it will function? I think we'll find a workaround for it. Oh, that's right, because we only got the four options, don't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. Talk. Yeah, 
and it's and it's going to be a pain, and that's why, like, I, again, later mods, I hope to do bigger things with actual uh, in-depth dialogue and whatnot, but uh, and that'll probably be a Minuteman uh, expansion, but it would be a kind of set it, create a, and it would be inspired largely by like the some of the militia units in the French and Indian Wars. Well, and I'm gonna, War. I'm, I'm going to diverge a little bit and probably makes people's eyes glaze over. But you know how the dialogue tree in Skyrim worked. You've as far it, as right? the yeah yeah it's like a it's like a kind of vis script system with a spaghetti bowl and shit connecting stuff yeah and so so you could actually you could probably I'm guessing if you got your four options one of the options could be I need more options or some crap and then you have three yeah. more and then one of those yeah. go back to the, so I mean I guess you could probably expand but that would get really clunky really fast yeah yeah and I'm gonna have to I deep down I'm gonna have to just have fun you know what is an option what is a scent what is a baby what is you know <laughs> those fucking dumb dialogue it's like the low intelligence uh, dialogue <laughs> options but Fallout New Vegas but uh, that's what it felt like sometimes man and I'm just like this is not my character I mean I know he's been through a lot maybe he's got some PTSD and he's you know a little shell shocked maybe concussed All right, you know, hold on, hold on. let's bring up my 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 biggest issue with the game I I, I, you, I don't know if you had any, you show up at the institute. And your 75-year-old son or whatever is like, I'm your son. And the first thing out of your mouth is not a paternity test question. <laughs> yeah, after all that. <laughs> I, You've just like, not to mention you've just had to murder like hundreds and hundreds of people to get to your kid. And then, and then there's no, that, that's, that's why Ash is getting a paternity test. Like not a chance in hell that isn't happening. I'm not, I'm going to tell you something. I, I killed the kid, uh, the 75 year old <laughs> kid. I shot him in the chest. I'm like, he, my I, son, did, I did too. And then my, I couldn't escape the Institute. I don't know if it bugged out. Oh, I, like, I the, fucking killed everybody. I didn't, I, 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 he, I said, and my mom, my mother thinking was the son's dead to me. He, he's, he's fucking dead. These people. It's I'm exactly done. what I did, but they locked me in the, like I shot him and the little kid in the room was running around screaming after that. I don't even know if that was supposed to happen. And then I couldn't exit any doors cause they were all locked. So oh. I was basically just locked. I don't know if it bugged out or if I was probably supposed bugged. To. Yeah. I shot him when he was laying in the bed. Uh, it was a little <laughs> later and he was supposed to be pitiful. And I'm like, well, I'll make it quick. I was like, that's nicer. <laughs> that's better than cancer. Subsonic 22 to the head. That's better than cancer. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of how I handled that. People were like, oh, fuck, that's took a dark turn. But, I mean, that's that's <laughs> how I felt. Well, that's because there wasn't really much of a connection to the characters, I guess you could say. None. Yeah, yeah none. There was uh, zero. Yeah, if it had been the wife or somebody. But I didn't – I I'm, was much more connected to – to the people from the settlements and whatnot, and the, and certainly the companions. And I generally like the companions in Fallout Four. They're not as strong as the New Vegas ones, but they're better than Fallout 3's companions, uh, certainly. And again, Bethesda did some. They made some improvements. Uh, as as hard as I am on them, I think they did some good things or tried. But they just, God, they did just. Uh, yeah, I can go on them, but 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 to get back on the quest stuff, uh, I, I know I'm going all over the place, but. Uh, yeah, that's my, my plan for Fallout 4 is to address some of the needs for side quests and uh, maybe make a boxing mod, uh, whether it's for the combat zone. I know there's probably going to be a half a dozen people making a combat zone mod, so I may just make an underground boxing when a bare Thunder, knuckle. Thunderdomes. No, it's, it's ready made, dude. It's ready to go. All somebody's got to do is jump in and do it, and I'm sure there's, there's going to be a bunch of people doing it, and, I, and that's fine, man. I, if I would be more, If somebody else does it, I'm like cool because I just want to keep making quests. See, that's and why. That's why I shot my quest into like you, you're saying start smaller and uh, vault vault two seventy three is. Uh, I'll, I'll give a little teaser to some people who've actually listened this far who are interested. It two seventy three does refer. It's actually negative two seventy three if you look on any of the things in the prelude quest, and it does refer to the Kelvin scale because my mod does uh. not take place on the planet. And it's going to be like I'm shooting for insanity. Like nobody's gonna touch this sucker, and uh, I'm I'm setting myself up for probably six to eight months of hell. But dude, go for insanity. Fallout will embrace it. Like man, I, one of my greatest regrets is that I didn't make my Area 51 mod, which was about aliens who 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 steal penises and they <laughs> they they synthesize hallucinogens and abuse them uh, chronically. And like they're these aliens on fucking LSD flying all over the place. See, stealing now you're dicks. making my scene sane because the aliens ah, are going to be involved and they're going to be like, but it's going to be like tying into the entire lore. I'm like, man, fuck that. I want to make aliens go, that kill Hitler. No, nah, dude, I'm seriously like play old world blues, man. I mean, it's, it's fucking, if you're going to go wild wasteland, go to the, go all out. Don't hold back, man. Uh, and fallout will, 
you know, but some people are not, not a lot friendly. You play Fallout 2, you got characters breaking the fourth wall and all kind of weird, yes. crazy shit yes. in there. Fuck it, man. Just have fun. People aren't playing it. You know, there, there's there's like fucking uh, Wasteland 2. If you want more grounded post-apocalyptic shit, you got that. Fallout still has a goofy side. I'm one of those people that, that totally embraces it. Now, and again, my mods, some are goofy, some are more serious, but I, I do like the goofy side. And I think... That's why uh, it'll be interesting to see how well Deadpool does, because... Uh, as, as far as the yeah, I just I just, like I, I I'm looking. That's that's the Valentine's Day movie for me and my wife. We're literally going to see it on Valentine's Day, and going to a dinner I, theater. I'm gonna go see it. I don't know if my wife will see it. I'm looking forward to Daredevil season two quite a bit. But uh, oh, that would yeah. be good. Yeah, I I just want to see Deadpool just because it's like you said, it's it's a it it's an out there marvel one where it's just he doesn't take he breaks the fourth wall, talks to the people. Yeah, like he's crazy. It's I like the crazy. I, I've always liked the crazy, and it showed in any of my Skyrim mods. They're just fucking insane. Yeah, it, but, but it's distinct. It's not. It's not predictable or conventional. I think that that's great, and I, I think oh, that's, that's just again because I'm insane. But hey, I'm crazy too. <laughs> Fuck it. That's embrace the dude. Oh, totally. I'm I'm a crazy fucking violent maniac, and I, I just fucking totally own it and 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 pour it into the mod. Bleed on the page. You know, pour out the the brain fluid on the fucking page. There, man. That's, that's what I actually okay. told Matt Grandstaff recently on the Bethesda Net forums. I was telling him, "Violence solves everything. Your games have taught me that." Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. well my mods especially out uh, that the violence although i was the violent bites you the, the violence I, that is one thing i tried to get was the non-stop violence eventually does bite you in the ass but uh yeah that's uh but I, I i do have one request though if you do your mods and you make them violent there there is a mod that i think is completely underrated even though i know mxr covered it i haven't checked it recently after i did it on mine it's called rip a guy's arm off and beat him to death with it you got to find a way to incorporate that. It's it's so seamless. You just punch a dude with unarmed, rip their left arm off, and then you have a left arm weapon in your hand. You beat the shit out of him with it. That's beautiful. That's I, that's a, that's art. That's art right there, man. I thought that was I was I was playing with that and I was like, why wasn't this in the base game as a perk? Like why wasn't there like an unarmed perk and the max level was Yeah, if your strength is high enough, fuck it, man. And the worst part about it though is it's sexist. Like fucking Bethesda is sexist. They you cannot dis uh, de limb women. I don't know if you noticed that in the mod. If you shoot men in the arms, you'll blow their arms off. Women, you can't dismember their arms. Sounds like a synth conspiracy to me. I think I, Preston's behind I... us. <laughs> if I was to guess, I know I don't know. That's uh, yeah. That who knows how, what the hell to decide this. There Honestly, are a lot of subtle things in there that, again, the lack of slavery, the lack of prostitution, things like that. That again, I'm like, come on, Bethesda. I know that you're trying to get to a bigger audience, but don't. Don't sugarcoat it too much. You that know? and the kids who are just invincible and stand there the whole time. That's why in my mod, yeah. so they fight back. I'm like, the kids would have like razor uh. blades and baseball bats. They'd beat the crap out of you. Yeah, it'd be, be like, yeah, there'd be some Lord of the Flies type fucking kids out there, man. They would, they'd kill you for the fucking conch or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they'd stab you to death with that shit. I think they the, funny, the funniest part in my testing video, I think, is where I I didn't realize that some kids were actually like factioned to you, like they'd help you. <laughs> and I, I shot like one of the kids just to just to demonstrate that the kid would pull out a bat and try to fight me. And while that kid was heading at me, another kid came up behind him and just beamed him over the back of the head and killed him. And I was like, "Damn!" Hey, that's <laughs> wasteland, man. That's 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 how it goes. I mean, it's 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 a rough anarchic uh, setting, and I think sometimes the Bethesda especially uh, loses uh, touch. I mean, there's plenty of violence, but it's. It's kind of meaningless violence in a way. Yeah. Uh, that's – but oh, one last thing before I do go. I, I, I have a shameless plug for – because oh, by yeah. waiting for the Gek, I've been working in the CK. So I am a, I'm about to release a Skyrim mod, Blood of the Nord. It's a Stormcloak mod. People – and it's not like, why are you so – are you some kind of fascist? You like the Stormcloaks all the time? What the fuck is wrong? I like both factions. It's just a random idea. It was a random mod idea, which is Stormcloaks killing Thalmor. And so that's basically what the mod's about. Uh, with you know some complications and shit along the way, and then I've got another one that I might make. Uh, and again, it depends on when Bethesda finishes uh, the fucking Gek. I might make my Beowulf adaptation, which is Thirst Saga. So, those are the two I'm working on. Uh, one's basically done, except for the voice acting, which is uh, underway, and the other one I'm kind of tinkering with. So. That's it for me, man. That's everything that, I'm working that on. That works. Just uh, I'll put like as usual, people. I'll put a link to his profile page down below. Check his shit out. Like it. Subscribe. Do whatever. I don't know. That's about it. And I'm gonna try to hash this audio together because I think I fucked it completely, and I'm gonna be confused. So. No worries. And hey, if you need anything else, yeah, just give me a holler, man. And again, we'll. 
you know, down the road, maybe we'll we'll co- collaborate with the alien penis snatching uh, Hitler and Preston, uh, you know, triumvirate, or I guess that would be the ultimate say, coll- I'll, collection of doom. I'll, I'll make I'll make a vow right now, right? This, this is this is a, this is a solid vow, and I think you should, you should join me on this one. If somehow when we sell mods, if we crack half a million dollars in like gross revenue from selling mods, if they do paid modding, I will make an alien penis snatching Hitler artistic mod with you. Okay, I swear to God, I'll do it. Half a million gross, I'll do it. We're in, guys. Yeah, my, yeah, my word. Yeah, my word. We'll even, we'll even do that if it's combined, right? So if I make two fifty, you make two fifty. We'll combine. If if we make half a million between the two of us, we will keep together, and we will definitely make that mod. So. You know, would be really lucky if some millionaires listening just gives us half a million dollars. I'll take that. Hey, do it. Yeah, the grass, the grass is growing on the ramparts. <laughs> but if, yeah, yeah, I'll fucking do. Yeah, uh, the dog. You want the dog to talk and do backflips? Fucking hey, motherfucker, send me a quarter million. It's yours. Whatever you want. You want fucking. You want tentacle rape dildos with Hitler's can't, mustache? Can't, can't I'll fucking that, do it. We can't legally pay sell mods anymore. Right? Oh, that's right. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, did, I didn't uh, mean that. I was joking. That's, that's satire. Uh, fair use and all that shit. I was actually <laughs> talking to myself. It's uh, that's a form of exp- yeah, that's just introspective dialogue. We're I'm gonna end it impressive. now before Bethesda yeah. sues us, guys. Uh, yeah. All right, and that's it. Hit and stop.